Hey man, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, I, I know I haven't done a Dutch oven video in a while. Um, I've been busy. I, I'm trying to get my garden going. I've you know, been working 12 hour days. Alright, alright, yeah. Um, all right, okay, man. All right, I, I know. I, I feel you. We, we got all these subscribers now. We gotta, we gotta keep, uh, keep the, the videos coming. All right, man. Okay. Yeah, I'll work on it today. All right. Take it easy. Look forward to it. See you. Well, I guess we need to do another Dutch oven video today. Oh, another subscriber. All right, well, as you guys heard from that phone call, I guess uh, a lot of my subs are looking for a new uh, Dutch oven video. It's been very popular on our channel. I would just want to give a shout out to the uh, 620 some subscribers we have as of today. Uh, I'm glad you guys like our stuff enough to, to sub us. Uh, throw us up some comments. Uh, we try to get back to every single person that comments on the page uh, if they're, you know, they have a, a valid uh, comment. So, keep them coming we're gonna do uh, another great Dutch oven video for you today this is gonna be our um, stuffed baked potatoes in the Dutch oven uh, they're gonna be awesome okay we have our washed um, nice big fat Idaho russet potato see how we got these two bamboo spoons lay on each side of it that's gonna prevent me from cutting all the way through it so we're just gonna start at one end of it We'll slice right down to our spoons, and that'll make our slices hold together. I'm gonna go about an eighth, eighth of an inch between our slices, try to stay straight. And this will uh, let us open up this potato. So without these spoons, it would be almost impossible to gauge it to where you didn't cut all the way through. I've seen a lot of people do these on YouTube in the oven. Uh, we're going to do ours in the Dutch oven. So, you see what we end up with? We end up with this potato. It's still holding on by the back side, but it's all open up in the front. I'm do that with the other one also. All right, next step, we're going to take our potatoes and set them in a bowl. And we're going to drizzle them with uh, some good olive oil. And it's just to help our uh, seasoning stick to the outside. Just going to kind of roll them around in there, get them nice and coated. You can use your fingers if you want. Don't really have to get it down in between the uh, slices because we're going to we're going to show you what we're going to do in between those. So I'm going to go ahead. And just get them good coated with olive oil. We're gonna what we're going to do now is we're going to grind some uh, coarse sea salt on those. I have some uh, freshly ground black pepper here. And that olive oil is going to help us stick to them. It would just roll off if we didn't have the olive oil on it. You can be pretty liberal with this. I like black pepper. And this is going to be the outside of our potato. You really can do this after we get done with the next step, so that's why we do it now. Okay, now for the, uh, the process. And um, you can vary on this. We have some uh, nice thick slice apple bacon. I'm gonna grab our first potato, we're gonna, <coughs> excuse me, I eat a piece of that raw pepper, really hot. <coughs> Let's stick it down in between the slice. And then we're going to skip a two or so. <coughs> Put in a slice of cheese. I'm going to skip one. Put in a slice of bacon. And you got to be careful. Open this up. You don't want to break your. Um, you don't want to break it off. So you use a knife. Kind of push it down in there. We skipped a couple on the ends there to keep it that from happening. So now we're going to go slice of cheese, slice of bacon, and we're just going to alternate, alternate that all the way down. This one I'm using Colby Jack. The uh, second one I'm going to use um, Pepper Jack, which uh, 
Mrs. Backwoods doesn't like peppers, so, but I love it. We're just going to continue this process. Get one slice of cheese in each one. All the way down. And uh, use your knife to get that bacon all the way down in there. So we'll finish this the rest of the way. You see how it's starting to arch now. That's what we want. And I'll show it. I'll show you um, how they look when they're all completed. Dutch oven preparation. A little bit of oil as usual. I'm going to use some olive oil. I'm going to wipe that all through the pot. Uh, I just use a paper towel. I'm going to get that. Make sure you're coating all your surfaces in here. But since we have this, uh, since we have the cheese on this, we know that's going to make a mess. Uh, it's going to cook pretty slowly, but. I know it's going to run down, so here we've made a um, piece of parchment paper. We just use the lid as a guide. I'm going to push that down in the bottom of the pot and uh, let it kind of curl up on the edges a little bit. And that oil will help it uh, actually stick in there. So uh, let me show you what that looks like when we're done there. Okay, so you got a little liner. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and carefully set our potatoes in here. You're gonna have to squish them down a little bit and make them pinch that up. Um, the bottom, you can also make a, take your pear knife and just make a tiny little flat spot at the bottom like this on the tips. Try not to cut that all the way through and that'll uh, help it stay balanced in the pot, but we want them be upright and you know that's not a totally proven thing yet that we can do that but we're gonna try to um, make them stay upright so that these fats and cheese will cook down into it so that's the idea whether it works or not yet to be seen I'm just trying to take this recipe and adapt it to the Dutch oven and I will uh, admit that this is my first try at this uh, in a Dutch oven. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, this time we are setting up for about 350. So we are on heat control this time. Uh, our last cook with the uh, steaks, we are just taking the crap out of it. Uh, here we're going to go ahead and arrange our charcoals, uh, which is true to form for Dutch oven cooking when you're trying to control your heat. Here um, I'm only going to use six or seven on the bottom. I really don't, when that cheese starts to melt, I don't want it to um, to burn. So, get our Dutch oven in. Uh, 15, maybe a few more on top. It's kind of a cloudy, gloomy day today here in Florida. It's uh, opening day of duck season. Obviously, I'm not out there hunting. Just couldn't make that happen yet. And it's so warm here, it's hard to get into going duck hunting. You see, I'm in shorts and, and Crocs. Kind of hard to get into it for me. We'll wait till a little later in the year. There are some ducks here. I've seen them, uh, but I usually can hear. We're we're pretty close to the lake. I usually can hear, uh, you know, the shots coming from the lake. And uh, I haven't heard a I haven't heard a single shot today. So don't think I'm missing a whole lot. All right. I'm going to leave her sitting there, and uh, we'll get these remaining coals out on the table, just in case we need to refresh any. Let's slow it down a little bit. We'll come back and check on it in a little while.
Okay, we're taking a peek at these guys now. What we want to test is the doneness of the potato. Now, <clears throat> since this is all opened up, it's, you know, it's going to cook much faster than it would if it was, you know, all together. It's getting pretty soft now, uh, getting close. So we're going to go ahead and uh, amp up the fire on it and give it a new shot of coals on the top and let it brown off. We've added a few coals to the outside rim, a couple of fresh ones just to let it carry, uh, finish up. Um, need a little more heat, so don't uh, be afraid to put some more coals on this pot. Uh, sometimes it's necessary. We are using some generic charcoal today, so it doesn't last quite as long as the good old uh, name brand stuff, so go check on it in a few minutes. All right, we're going to check in on it uh, about an hour 30. Um, they look perfect to me. So you notice that the, the cheese, um, some of the cheese is cooked down to make us nice and crispy. And uh, we're going to take this guy off and serve him. All right, folks, this is a side dish. We're going to go ahead and try to get these out of here in one piece. Which is not always easy. Um, you know, that one did break apart on me a little bit. We'll kind of just, you know, reset them uh, in the order that he came out, so we can get to hold the other one in one piece. They're not sticking to the parchment paper, but they're very tender, um, and you know the segments want to break apart. And we'll see if we can get the rest of him out of there. top is nicely golden brown. Got a couple of other little bits of the cheese and stuff there. And um, thought what we'd do was put a little bit of the bacon grease in the bottom of the pan. Thought we'd just take the silicone brush and just wipe a few, you know, strokes across the top there, give it a little shine. A little nice little shine. And um, That'll help with the presentation. And then we have some uh, freshly chopped scallions cut on the bias right from the garden. And we're going to put those right over the top um, just for presentation. And they, and they taste great. So I think that's a pretty good uh, backwards gourmet dish there. Uh, try making this for Thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving's a couple days away. Do this. Uh, you can do this anywhere. Do it at camp. Do it. Do it uh, at home. Uh, in your Dutch oven. And there's something about it. But when you do it in this Dutch oven, it somehow tastes better. So give it a shot. This is Backwoods Gourmet. We'll see you next time. Hey Backwoods, you know, guys, I'm always totally honest with you. Uh, if something don't turn out right. This was our first attempt on this. Um, it's awesome. Um, the potatoes cook perfectly. The bacon, the cheese is still in there. It didn't all run down the bottom pot. So give this one a try. This is a winner. This is backwards. I'll see you next time.